Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can create a very simple user registration, login or sign up page using one simple plugin. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So once you're in your WP admin dashboard, what you want to do is head over to plugins and then hit the add new. Once you're here, search in the search box for user registration. Now in the search results, head over and install this exact plugin by WP Everest and then activate it. Now it will redirect you to this following page and you can skip it because it's very simple. I will show you everything that you need to know. It's basically very simple to the Elementor page builder. If you're familiar with it, I'm usually using it to build almost all my websites. So the first thing that you might be able to see here is that we have a registration form and we have a login forms. So let's create a new one, hit this button. And then right here, we have some pre-made, we have a premium, we have free versions. This plugin does have some extensions. If you want to, by all means, head over and upgrade the plan if you need them because they have some very, very, very good integrations. We have a WooCommerce integration, customize my account, file upload, multi-step form, profile connect, email templates, PDF form submissions, and so forth, as you might be able to see from this screen. Also, you have an option to upgrade to Pro, just give you some more benefits, as you might be able to see. It's not sponsored by them by any means. I just wanna show you a very simple way to create those forms with this plugin. So let's head over back to add new. Under the user registration, I will start from screen scratch, you can head over and create this form if you want to save for yourself some time. It's a with a recaptcha. If you've missed this video on my channel, it will be popping up right now on your screen. So let's head over here, start from scratch. Yes, head over and name your registration form. Let's hit continue. Right here, you'll be able to see you have keyboard shortcuts. It's something new. I haven't seen it before, but yeah, that's what it is. So let's close this. Now, some of these options are locked because they can be used only one time. And if you try to click them, you'll be able to see here. It will be prompted with this little pop-up. Username field can be used only one time in the form. All right. Now, what I usually do, I don't usually put them into columns and therefore you can change this. You can head over over here and then you can change the little columns as you might be able to see here. I usually put them everything in one column or you can head over and do it in three columns, whatever suits you best. And then I customize it inside the Elementor page builder with some little CSS tweaks. So we have here the username, user password, you have the user email and then confirm password. When I hover or when I move my mouse over those fields, I can change the order of them. So username, I usually put the first one and then I usually do the email right underneath it and then use your password and then confirm password. I think it more logically fits right in this order. We can add some more fields. It's very basic. You can drag and drop it as you might be able to see here and it will pop right wherever you want to. Let's head over and yeah, put it right above it and then you'll be able to see it will load and then we have a nickname. And the same thing applies with all the other fields. We have input field, we have a country, text area, date, checkbox, number and much more. We have some elements with a little crown on the top right of the little boxes that we see here. So these are premium. Once you're done with it, there are a little things that I would encourage you to do before you do publish the form or you update it. So let's head over to the form settings. Inside the form settings, you'll see some more options to configure this exact form. So we have user approval and login options. So what that means is basically that you'll be able to configure whenever a new user wants to register to your website, what will happen. So by default, it's basically set to auto approve and manual login. And you can also auto approval and auto login and then admin approval and and auto approval after email confirmation. What is basically more known these days? I'll set this option and we have the default user role. So whether it's gonna be a subscriber, or it's gonna be a customer, shop manager, translator, or any other role on your website. So I usually do it by customer and then enable strong password. I would really encourage you to do enable this option, make sure it's strong or medium, but I usually keep it as strong so nobody would be able to hack or get into your user's account by any 
any means. The next thing that we have is submit button class. If you're familiar with CSS, you can put your class right over here and then reference it in the page builder. And then we have the submit button. Now you can also customize it or write a different text. I would leave it as submit and then success message position we have at the bottom. Then again, you have the option to set it at the top. The next thing is to enable captcha. If you do have captcha on your website, do so. I would highly recommend you to do that. It saves you a lot of headaches in the future. Form template, we have a default, you have border, you have flat, you have rounded, you have rounded edges. I usually do it with rounded edges. I think it's nice. Then we have a form class if you want to reference the whole form again with CSS. And then we have redirect after registration, no redirection, and then internal page or external URL. So I usually do internal page and then I usually choose the page for the user dashboard. So that would be here. Now, waiting period before redirection in just two seconds, you can wait a little longer. You can set it to two, one, five. Once we're done with it, let's update the form. Now you'll be able to see here that we have the nickname, we have the username, we have the username email and then the user password and confirm password. I just removed the username and password. That's why it's been targeted or seen as red. If we want to just style it a little bit better, what we want to do is jump to the Elementor page builder and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. So let's close those tabs. You want to grab this little short code, just click these little two squares, then copy short code. Let's head over to our pages and then let's add new. Now we're going to call this page user registration as the form user registration and then hit publish. Now, if you're using Gutenberg, then yes, in this place, you want to paste your shortcode. But as I'm using Elementor, I will head over and edit this page with Elementor. And the next thing that you want to do is basically grab the shortcode element and then drag and drop it to the page. Now let's head over here and then short code. So drag and drop it to your page and then nothing happens right now. But if you paste this right over here, you'll be able to see that the form is right here. Now we'll be able to style it a little bit. If you're familiar with CSS, this is the place where you can put your skills into play. Still stay on this element. Let's head over to advanced and then scroll to the bottom and then custom CSS. And then from here, you can style this however you would want to because it's very, very simple. You just click the element with the right click on your mouse and then you just inspect the element and then you choose it and then you style it. So let me show you an example of it. One more thing that I will have to note is that when you're adding a class in CSS in Elementor, right in this advanced tab, what you want to do is prefix this element with selector. Why? Because it selects only this element throughout the whole website. So if this class have been shown in any other place in the website, it will take place the same as it is here, then the same it will apply over there. Let's close this. As you might be able to see here, we have our button. And when I hover the button, it turns red or somewhat white pink, you could call it. Let's say I want to change this. So I hover it and then I click my right button on the mouse and then I hit inspect. So we have this element in the HTML where it is a button. One more thing that I want to teach you is that when you want to specifically target this element, what you want to do is head over to make sure you're still on the element. And then we have this little plus icon. So hit that and then it will show you or will configure and take all these classes and elements from this element inside the HTML hit enter. And then right over here, you want to stylize right in the browser. And then let's say I want to change the background color and then background color. Let's do to black. It's basically a hex color, usually with this little hash sign. And then I do three times uh, zero and then it will turn into black. Once this is done, you want to highlight only these three elements and then Control C or Command C if you're on Mac, and then head over back to this little arrow, open the editor, and then just paste it right over here and it will take place right as you might be able to see on the screen. Now, let's say I want to change the button or change the color of the button once I hover it. Let's add a new class again, selector, and then let's do the class right over here. And then right after the submit button class, as you might be able to see, classes are being shown with the little dot here and then just put column and then write hover. So when I hover the button, I want to change the color to something else. So let's say I want to change it to, let's say white is usually big Fs. And when I hover it, as you might be able to see here, it turns into white, but the text still stays on white. So what I want to do is head over back over here and then write color, it will affect the text color. Now let's change this to black again. 
hash sign and then three times zero and then closed with this little sign. Great. So as you might be able to see here, it's changed. Now let's add a little border because I think it will add a little to it. So let's add a border, then one pixel solid. So hash sign three times zero and then let's close it and then you will be able to see here we have a little border that's been right now displayed on the button just don't forget to update this so it will take place those little changes one more thing that you'll notice is once i close the editor the form is a little wide so what i want to do is just a little squeeze it so it won't be that wide so let's open the editor again let's head over to the advanced and then let's go to the layout now under the layout usually i do this with padding so i change this from pixel to AMS because AMS is more responsive. So let's do 10 AMS from the right and 10 AMS from the left. Yeah, that's good, but it's still quite wide for me. So let's do something like 18 and then 18 from the other side. Yeah, I think it looks a little better. That's pretty much good for me. If you want to style it a little more, then by all means, go ahead and do so. Now, as you might be able to see here, we have the user registration title over here. You can hide it by simply going to the wrench icon right over here in the left bottom hand corner of your screen then hit settings and then hide title we still want to add a title for this page so what you want to do is head over back to your elements then drag and drop a new heading so center it and then let's do something like site registration and let's add some padding on the top and on the bottom so again let's do it with m's padding and then let's do two on the top and two on the bottom give it a little space to breathe so we have a site registration we have this form and this button has been stylized right after that everything that you've configured inside the plugin would take place as we go back to our page editing and then let's head over back to our user registration right over here and then we have this form right over here registration form you can head over and trash the default form if you want to, and then it will leave you with this registration form. And you don't have to head over back inside and edit it again. If you want to copy the shortcut right from here, you can head over and do so. But let's say you want to create a user login page. What you want to do is head over to the login forms and then right over here, copy this shortcode and just create a page. And the same thing if you want to create a user my account page. If you want to create my account page, you need to create a new page and then add the following shortcode. This show my account page login form. Yeah, that's pretty much it with this plugin. Again, you can customize it. You can do a lot of things with it and it's just one plugin. I really hope this video helped you and if it did, I'd really be glad if you leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any other videos or tutorials on Elementor, WordPress or WooCommerce. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.